Hello everyone. I am back with a guest again. I am Alice Rose and we are having a conversation with Phyllis Garcia. I will let Phyllis explain what her activities are here in the community center and I turn it over to you my guest. Well, thank you very much Alice for the opportunity to come in. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on that have been going on in town for many many years and not that many people know that they exist. Two in particular that I wanted to talk about today. By all means, dear. And we're starting, I'd like to start with the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. This was commissioned by the uh, Town Council in, believe it or not, in the 90s, in the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. And it is put in the charter that this committee will exist. And actually, I think many people have heard of the committees that are, for example, the veterans, mm -hmm. um, disabilities, people mm -hmm. with disabilities. So there are a lot of committees that exist in town. And frankly, I didn't know about a few of them myself. And I didn't know about your committee. <laughs> I've been coming here to the community center for a number of years until this presentation that you had recently. With the mayor present, and who else was present? Well, we had, uh, you're referring to our spring event right. that we have annually mm -hmm. in May. And you're right, this year we had a guest speaker, Maggie Downey, came in from her uh, personal euphoria. Mm -hmm. She's a Pilates instructor and did a wonderful presentation. She did, I enjoyed it. And it was, it was really wonderful, though, mm -hmm. Alice, wasn't it? Yes. She did a great job. And that is part of our event. But surprisingly, even after that, I don't. I hope the message got out mm -hmm. that this is a part of what the committee does. Mm -hmm. So basically, as I mentioned, this is chartered by the town council, mm -hmm. and it is specific. There are specific members from various parts of the community, people representing the town, uh, clergy, uh, the medical arena, and we come together and our charge is to survey the seniors mm -hmm. annually and then present to the town council what the needs of the senior citizen community A question, are. can an ordinary yes. senior like myself join and be a member? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, the meetings are open. We meet on the third Thursday of the month, mm -hmm. each month at 3 p.m at the community center in room S1, which is located where the senior center is, in that section of the, of the building. Mm -hmm. So the meetings are open. Mm -hmm. Anybody can attend. Oh, don't, okay. You don't necessarily have to be a senior. Anybody can attend. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some people come in who have things they want to present to the committee. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have them open to Zoom. Mm -hmm. So for those individuals who can't get out of the house or uh, either because they have a, no transportation, a disability, whatever it might be, they can join the meetings via Zoom. And know how to use the tech. <laughs> yes, but I am going to speak after we've, we've done with, with this committee topic. I want to talk about the tech assistance that we also have here at the Senior Center. So yes we can provide that assistance for anybody who wishes to attend. So mm -hmm. we meet the third Thursday of every month, except we do not meet June, July, August, and December. Right now we do have openings. The charter does specify specific number on mm -hmm. the committee, as does the charter for all the committees that all are right. chartered mm -hmm. by okay. the town. Mm -hmm. So me. we do have openings. Mm -hmm. If any senior citizen has a desire to join the committee, they should contact Amy Miller, give their name, or they can just walk in. You okay. Know, at three right. o'clock on, on the Thursday, they can contact Amy just to confirm. You have open doors and you welcome people. Yes, absolutely. And somebody who's not sure whether they want to join can attend a meeting or two or three mm -hmm. before they make that right. final decision. This is a wonderful means of getting concerns out to the town council. 
Unfortunately, we have yet to kind of decide on how we're going to survey seniors. I'm hoping that we will be able to have a forum, as you know, Mm -hmm. at forums here at the Senior Center. We've had William Tong, our Attorney General. Oh, I enjoyed that one so much. I mean, he is a wonderful speaker. He's so personable. Wasn't wasn't that great? Yeah, I didn't know that he grew up in Wethersfield. I, I didn't know that either, and that his parents had a restaurant and all that. It was just, it was really very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know that he's been there, Fred Presley, the town manager. So I'm, I'm hoping that maybe we can do something similar, mm-hmm. sponsored by the committee, mm-hmm. to get seniors together to start talking well, about Well, that is concerns. one of the things that I wish to promote, because I feel as though... Um, The mature adult is underutilized. Yes. Yes. You know, the skills and memories and wisdom that might be brought to the situation, they're too shy to show up, I think, many cases, or they really don't know this is here. You know, I, I think you're raising a very good point, Alice. I don't know what deters people from participating. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right that we have, you know, we've had those meetings before and then we have people speaking up and they have wonderful ideas and yet then they walk out and nothing gets done Mm -hmm. i just wish there was a way to bring these people together and i think the advisory committee is a a step in that direction i agree i agree Mm -hmm. and, and speak up and the other thing our elected officials have to remember is that we as a group vote well, of course. You know, we don't vote as a block. <laughs> I'm not saying that. No, no, no. But we get ourselves to the vo- voting place and we cast our ballots when mm-hmm. when we have to. So we really, I mean, that's part of obviously putting out your opinion. But it's also important, as you say, to try to, to funnel all these wonderful well, ideas. Well, the whole thing of how do you build a community, what brings them together, that mm-hmm. kind of matter. And participation in, you know, even just coming and listening to what the commission is talking about or overcoming the natural shyness that some may have. Too many these days are simply discounted because of their age, because this is the youth culture that we are now in experiencing in this country. Mm-hmm. And so people don't realize and they don't know history in a way that it's personal people who've been through much tougher times than those who complain about things today have ever known necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, not to say that, not to say they aren't people who are homeless and poor and in real trouble that need help, but uh, you think about the Depression days and things like that mm-hmm. where young men to, had to you know, hop trains and got used to that life and became a whole colony of hobos mm-hmm. rattling the rails back and forth across the country. I mean, you know, they don't have that, how do I say, um, what the ordinary person has survived. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. How much what more wonderful our opportunities are today than they may have been in the past. And really not the too distant past either. No, and it's true. And, and those experiences now have created this wealth of experience and skills and knowledge that can be very useful. Of course. In, in a variety of settings, whether mm-hmm. it be, you know, town government or, you know, helping out in the schools, whatever, whatever that might be. I absolutely agree that mm-hmm. that's a that's a a population that is being underutilized. And not only that, they need to be cur- encouraged to come out of their houses. It's not not being isolated. For me, I would not care to go I mean, that's just my personal thing, care to go to any situation where uh, one is segregated by generation. I want a neighborhood. I want to be able to see families growing up and, you know, activities of regular Mm -hmm. activities of a neighborhood. That is, to me, what creates zest for a living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I think some of the barriers are also transportation. But certainly, if that is a barrier, or one of several barriers, we need to bring it forth. If there's something that that needs to be presented to the town council, Mm -hmm. then it can be presented to the committee, and the committee as a whole can go to the town council and say, look, 
we've gotten feedback about this, this, and this. That's and, again. You know, what yeah. can the town council do? We need more funding, you know, whatever it is. And I know mm -hmm. that, you know, nobody wants to pay more in taxes. And I know that funding is, you know, we need to be careful. But if it means a little bit extra in order to allow seniors to get out of their homes, then so be it. Well, and the more volunteers that are available, the more savings the town will realize, I believe. Yes. Well, I mean, you're, and right now you can see right here in the community center, there are lots of volunteers. If there were no volunteers, the work either wouldn't get done or they'd have to pay somebody mm -hmm. to do it. So I agree. The more volunteers um, ultimately is a financial benefit to all of us. I agree. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, so that's one piece of, you know, what is, what is going on with the seniors. I wish that there was a better communication tool. I mean, I've lived in Wethersfield for 36 years, and I will admit this is a wonderful town, but communication is not our strong suit. We need to get the word out uh, to people. And you have to reach there. out to people on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Nothing that puts them down or makes them feel foolish or whatever. Just tell them that they have value to offer. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, to know that they are wanted for what they can contribute. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully if the committee can sponsor something in the next, our, our next meeting now would be September. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully in the fall we can get a forum, uh, just a brainstorming session to see how best to communicate mm -hmm. with people in town. That would be, that would be at least a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Because I agree, the communication tool, the vehicle is just as important as the message itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you have to remember that those in my generation are not adept at adapting to the modern technology. <laughs> now, that brings me now to the, uh, our other focus. And I understand that the technology, and it's moving very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It's un very unfortunate, though, Alice, that for those individuals who don't stay connected with the technology, they're really missing out because they're, that is the wave of the future. I mean, let's face I it. I agree. You go to the doctor's office and mm -hmm. now, you know, nothing is on paper anymore. They give you a That's tablet. That's the and point do it. I want to make with regard to that. There's a difference in the way someone my age has learned how to learn. Now, I learn not by, especially sequences, to use the phone, for instance by seeing it on a scroll or having someone go boop, 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 boop and say, this is a sequence. It doesn't stick with me. I have to see a hard copy because I learned how to learn with reading the instructions mm -hmm. and being able to refer back to them, be able to think about it. Mm -hmm. That's my learning process. It's not that I have an inability, but when you get frustrated enough, you no longer even want to be bothered with it. That's now, something to overcome. I, I agree. And you're not the only one, and that's, that's an issue for a lot of people regardless of age. Mm -hmm. But what we've done here, we also have a, a program here at the community center, and it's called Tech Help for Seniors. Mm -hmm. And we've been in existence for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And initially, we were part of a national organization mm -hmm. called senior net mm -hmm. and that organization decided that all their affiliates they wanted them to pay we decided we didn't want to pay for membership so we went off on our own mm -hmm. and we've still been in existence and back then 20 plus years ago many of the seniors left the workforce before the tech boom Mm -hmm. so they really weren't familiar with technology computers etc so we would get people to come in all the time for classes. We ran classes all the time. Well, you do Very charge basic. for the classes here at the community center, don't you? No, we do not. Oh, because I came for classes one time early early on okay. when I had my first uh, so-called smartphone. Well, it is smart. I'm not smart enough for it, I guess. <laughs> no, but I mean, everybody. a smartphone is only 
tells you that it can connect to the internet. That's all really that mm-hmm. means. But we do, Amy will sometimes do at the senior center a lunch and learn. Mm-hmm. And at the lunch and learn, there will be a presentation mm-hmm. from the tech group. Mm-hmm. Um, or uh, I will do, I specifically will do a one on one, which I think is very helpful for those individuals who learn as you do, where they need a little bit more. They need it written or they need it step by step. And so we're not really doing and classes practice. anymore. <laughs> and, well, practice, I tell everybody that leaves a class, you have to practice, use it or lose it. And that's, that I can't But saying that control. is not the same as handing the step-by-step instructions that they can practice on their own. Yes, but they do get that. Mm-hmm. They get that, but what they do with it afterwards, I, I can't control that, unfortunately. But... <laughs> Do you really want to? No. No, I don't. Let them but, struggle with it. But they need it. And it's true of myself, too. If I don't do something for a long period of mm-hmm. time, I'm going to forget it. So we have those classes, and we have a one on one individual assistance, and we run Zoom classes as mm-hmm. well, which, believe it or not, you would think, oh, I don't know, how do you do that on Zoom? With the Zoom classes, it really is basically an overview, and that gives the participants, and usually it's a, it's a larger group, it's not a, a single person, but it gives them a little flavor of what it is, and then they can practice on it. But Phyllis, so the other thing that I also learn on a personal level, mm-hmm. and Zoom, I don't know, I'm not comfortable with that, it's something so new to me, so. And a lot of people are like that, Alice. A lot of people do not like Zoom. They want mm-hmm. personal. But we do offer that. Mm-hmm. And I hope we can get the email address on the screen so that people can see our email address. Mm-hmm. If they have questions or if they wish to schedule something. Do you have your, your email address to give yes, now? Yes, I gave it to, yeah, uh, our producer has it, and hopefully, well, there it is, right there. Oh, right how about that? Screen. Very so, good. Yeah, so it's up Thank there. Thank you. And <laughs> uh, people can contact us, and people might be wondering, well, I mean, do you respond? Does it go, you know, to, to mm-hmm. cyber heaven? Well, no. <laughs> Believe me, I do respond to them because they come on my phone. Mm-hmm. So I see them and I respond usually within 24, but no, absolute no more than 48 mm-hmm. hours later. So people can schedule if they have questions, if they're interested in doing a class. When is the next class on this, that, and the other? You know, right now we are focusing, because most people want focus, on either a tablet or a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Computers, uh, not many people have computers anymore or even mm-hmm. laptops anymore. Mm-hmm. Basically, people are using tablets or smartphones. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're focusing on, instruction assistance in that. Mm-hmm. And I have been doing both Androids and iPhones, and we have other volunteers who are interested basically in the Apple products. Okay. I also want to give a pitch for more volunteers. You mentioned earlier volunteering. You know, it's funny because a couple of days ago I was looking at some old minutes Mm -hmm. from past meetings, and I was looking at the attendance, and I thought, I mean, we had a very active group of volunteers Mm -hmm. in our tech program, in our tech assistance program. And, you know, unfortunately... People have either left the area or have moved on to greener pastures. And we've just not been able to get enough volunteers. So there's a very small band of very loyal volunteers who continue to assist, but we need more. Anybody who's interested in volunteering can contact us at the email address, at the Gmail address, to help seniors. And the more volunteers we have, the more assistance we can provide. Mm-hmm. You know, what... what whatever it may be. And this ties in to what I was mentioning earlier about the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, that anybody who says, I'd like to go, but I can't, I don't have transportation, I'm not mobile enough, if you want to participate on Zoom, we will be more than happy to set you up, show you how to use it, et cetera. It's not difficult at all. It really is. And they could have a helper also. 
you know, if yes. they have someone in the family that's a little more yes. familiar with it type of thing. Yes, and a, a lot of times all they need is to be able to see it set up on their device and see how easy it is mm -hmm. to just to be able to get in. And yes, you're right, you know, whether it's a, uh, a health aide or a family member or whatever, mm -hmm. can assist them when the time comes. Absolutely. I think it's nice for them to bond with their grandchildren. Their grandchildren would do this very easily. Yes, but I have to tell you that my experience has been from people who say, my niece helped me, my nephew. I mean, I had a, somebody even earlier today, an adult, who had his brother help him. And all of a sudden I said, this, this doesn't look the same as your phone did last week. Oh, yeah, my brother just did it. What happens is they do it, they take care of it, but they don't explain what they've done. Uh, so I'm familiar with that. I come back and I say, well, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. I gave it to my, my nephew. I asked my nephew to help me or my niece or my grandson, whatever it might be. And, you know, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a double-edged sword. Yes, mm -hmm. they're there to assist you, but, you know, sometimes the kids just don't have the patience. Recognize the difference in the learning pattern. Yes, and they don't. Mm -hmm. Alice, I have to, they, they don't. They mm -hmm. really don't understand that sometimes it takes a little bit more. Or a different, a slightly different approach. Yes, and it takes time. Oh, but of course. You know, and that's and like, everyone is impatient. Everything has to be done just that's like that. Right. No, no, Ab you're absolutely right. So we're, we're looking at, um, again, volunteers to mm -hmm. come in so that we can expand, but I, I just want to stress that we have this service currently available, mm -hmm. and it's a service that we've had for a long time. For, for and many years. people have benefited from it. Absolutely, absolutely. There have, we were running classes that were full, um, lecture classes. We also have computers mm -hmm. that people were doing hands-on. Here in the community center? Yes. Oh, where are they? Yes, they're in that S1. Oh, Behind, I don't know where that is. <laughs> well, S1 is the office right before Amy's office. Oh, okay. Okay. There is, I'm sure you've seen it, it's a beige panel. Okay, it's in the folded, back of the room? Yes, the folding. Oh, yes, I remember. When you open that, mm -hmm. behind that are, is a table and there are several laptops there. Oh. It was a way, obviously, of protecting the equipment. Mm -hmm. Because originally, 20 years ago, the senior center coordinator at the time got a grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, it was, I think it was $50,000. It mm -hmm. was very, it was a wonderful grant. And because of that grant, we were able to buy equipment. And the and, money stretched further in those days. And it, well, and it did, but we also charged. Mm -hmm. So we were able to, I mean, not refill the coffers, but I mean, we were able to have a little bit of income coming in. And I mean, we currently, we have money available. So we've mm -hmm. been able to update, we bought, we got rid of the computers and got laptops instead. And now we also have tablets. Okay. And you know, people come in here and I believe the, um, what is that, AARP that does the tax AARP. Mm -hmm. They do the tax assistant, mm -hmm. don't they? Yes. And I think they've been using some of our equipment too. Mm -hmm. uh, I know when people- Yeah, and there are many, many, um, elders there who have experience with that, and they're, they're doing fine with it. Yes, yes. But mm -hmm. well, we have the iPads. We have iPads here that people can use for various programs, and you know, we, we allow people to use them. It's not just mm -hmm. for those people seeking tech assistance. Um, and it's, it's been working. Now, if somebody were interested in doing that, who would they contact? Amy? You mean, uh, like, interested in doing what? In a class? Accessing those iPads and whatnot. You said they... Yes. They can contact Amy initially, or they can contact us at the email and say, you know, oh, I'd, like, okay. I'd like to be able to use it. Uh, we only ask that it be signed out and that it be done for a limited period of time because we only have, I think we only have four or five of them. So. Well, I'm learning as time goes on, as I'm delving into this and paying attention, an amazing amount of or a number of resources there are available that people just up to now are not necessarily aware of. Yes, Alice, I absolutely agree. I think that that as as you continue with your programming that I'm very excited about. Oh, thank because you. Because you will you will bring in people 
um, who will talk about these various programs mm-hmm. and and kind of tell people, hey, you know, we're out here and, and we're available. And it's very easy mm-hmm. to contact. I would say, yes, call Amy. Amy is very busy. Oh, I, I know. Say that but she has wonderful assistance, though, too. Yes, she does. But, I mean, she's got the whole senior center, too. Mm-hmm. The best way for somebody to contact the tech help group is to contact us via the email. And there it is. Okay. All right, the Gmail, and, and we will pick up. Mm-hmm. And we will get back to people. And again, if they want okay. to schedule. Okay, one additional thing. Yes. Tell me a little bit about you. How long have you lived in Wethersfield, and when did you get involved in all this? Well, it's, it's funny you, you ask. As far as, the, as far as the tech help group 20 years ago, I've been here 36 years. I've lived in mm-hmm. Wethersfield. And I raised my son here. He's been through the public school system, mm-hmm. but did go to technical high school. So he didn't go to high school here in town. Mm-hmm. When he went kindergarten all the way through middle school. I mean, uh, yeah, middle school. Um, So I got involved because I saw an ad on Channel 14. Okay. Asking for volunteers to provide tech assistance. And I'm assuming that that ad was put out by the senior center coordinator at that time. Mm -hmm. So I contacted her because I thought that it would be perfect for my son to do. At the time, mm-hmm. I think he was 15. And I said, gee, I'm going to contact her. I came to meet her, and she said, well, you know, this is a senior net organization, and we work with people over 50. And I said, well, what are you saying? The volunteers have to be over 50. I wasn't that happy about that. <laughs> I thought he, he would be much better with the seniors than I would be. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's how she wanted to set it up. She did not want the volunteers to be under 50. That's mm-hmm. how I got involved. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Thank goodness. He's also done sessions. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because at one class, my father attended, I was there, and my son was there. You so spread the three, word throughout the family. It was three <laughs> generations. It was, it was funny to see. But that's how I got involved. And for the Senior Center, I mean, I'm sorry, for the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, Amy put a call out in the newsletter. You know, that's another plug is for Amy's the monthly newsletter for the Senior mm-hmm. Center. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. She's got a bunch of programs. Isn't that, is that pro- broadcast on the uh, Channel 14 channel? No, but actually, I think... There's some interest in bringing somebody in to talk about the senior center programming. Mm-hmm. In fact, I just mentioned it today, and I, I don't know if Amy has the time, but Amy said she would like for me to do it. Mm-hmm. So I would come in whenever they could schedule mm-hmm. it, or whatever they're looking for. Well, yeah, and to go through here that. we go, another untapped resource that people don't know enough about. Yes, I know. And, you know, and the website... Is really lacks mm-hmm. the, the flexibility of getting through that, and I understand that's being revamped, but that's that also has a wealth of information if you can find it. The other thing, and again, I want to do a plug because people may have noticed, the two televisions that mm-hmm. we now have, one over here in the corner and one in the front where you walk in, mm-hmm. and it lists activities mm-hmm. in the senior center, that was donated by the donations made from the family of a former volunteer of our organization who passed away. Sort of a ma- memorial gift. That's correct. That's uh-huh, right. That's very lovely. So those TVs... I are, wondered where they came from. <laughs> those were those TV, and we pushed to have them mounted, and, you know, around, around town, you know, things move very, very slowly. But we pushed to have them mounted, et cetera. It was a very generous donation made by that family. I'll say so. So we're, mm-hmm. we're very, very thankful to them. And she I'd like to give home. a plug for something, too, a, a, a resource that was donated to the town, and that is the um, upcoming golf tournament that's being done to raise money to maintain that Mikey's Place playground that they, in yes. Memorial uh, yes. to, his, um, to Henry's and that's an annual event, isn't it? Yes, yes. it is. The child that died at three years old. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. People knew that. Was it the last name Diversa? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah Mikey mm-hmm. Diversa, and that's located over there at Hammer School. Or right. In that right. corner over there. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's, yeah, Hartford that's, Avenue and where yes. it goes by. Yes. Yep. And there are yeah, a lot we, of activities. Um, so. mm-hmm. 
How are we doing? All righty. Well, I, thank you, Al. Again, thank you very much for this opportunity to, to talk about what's oh, going I'm, on. And thank you so much. I mean, you're a revelation to me, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I, you're another undiscovered resource. Oh, Happy I found you. Well, fortunate. You know, for people who work, it's very difficult for them to get out and do things. Unfortunately, I'm retired. So... I have I have the time and I I mm -hmm. love being in this building I really do this is I love the people I love meeting yeah. everyone here I just do yeah no this has been I I you know I didn't even know you until we met at one of those sessions mm -hmm. um, just fairly recently so mm -hmm. again thank you very much this has been a lot of fun hey invite me again anytime you want oh I'd be delighted thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you Alice <laughs> okay good night folks. <laughs>